The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello. Um, this is Brian Harrigan. We're getting ready to start the new pause, uh, the webinar. It is going to only be one webinar, not two. If people haven't seen that. Um, I am trying to make sure people can hear me. Uh, we only have you in listen mode. We're going to ask the questions to be typed in. We'll re review those periodically. We're going to use those to make some frequently asked questions. Um, so if some people can possibly type in the chat to let me know that they're hearing me, that would be helpful. That way I can know if people are um, actually hearing the broadcast. Okay, so people can hear me. Yes, we will be posting the webinar slideshow and the documents on the website. Um, no, they are not up right now. There was a couple of them we had to make a couple little tweaks to. We found a couple little grammatical errors. So we're getting that fixed. They will be up. And uh, so that's that question. Glad to see people can hear me. And we're right on time. It, we do have a lot to cover. It may go a little over an hour today, but we should be in an hour and a half to be able to do that and answer questions today. So, um, and I'm basing on, basing on what I can see, it looks like everybody has just the screen that says new pause system, the basics, and you're not seeing other pieces of the uh, PowerPoint talk about slides and advancing. That should be on my other page. Okay. So if anybody doesn't have that, please let me know. And I'm going to go ahead and get started on the webinar. So we have just a review of the workflow, the new workflow. Those of you who have been able to get in the training environment, we do know that there's a problem with the training environment today. Um, something happened last night, and we're trying to get that fixed. Uh, people are logging in and just not getting the application. But the workflow, finalize the cost projection like you always do. That doesn't change. Authorize the cost projection in the SPA area. SPA area itself has changed a little bit, but that part of the process doesn't change. In SPA, after you authorize, you're gonna, we're going to display all of that information in a what we call PROS preview page. And I see somebody can't see the slides. Hopefully, uh, Dana, can you possibly see it? I mean, it's a, that's the main screen that's up. According to my stuff, that is the screen that's showing. So um, hopefully you can see that. If not, I'm not sure if it's your computer or if there's something else going on. And if anybody else is having that same problem, please let me know. Um, so you get to a pause preview area. There you'll be able to do some uh, cha small changes to pause, do some editing, and then you will have a, the ability to hit a submit button. Upon hitting the submit button, you'll receive confirmation of enrollment or a listing of errors that prevent enrollment. So if everything's in order right then, the pause is enrolled. No waiting 10 days, 10 days for us to process it and send you back a response. Um, the proposed pause remains in any proposed pause remains in the awaiting pause submission area and listing in SPA until it either A is successfully enrolled or something new for that year comes in to replace it. And then it'll say, Oh, you have new changes, we're gonna look at the new changes, we're not looking at the old. So that's how that pause that flow works. Changes to MSS. MSS hasn't changed a whole lot, except for, well, yes, you're going to have a place to view pause. The spot area has changed, and the search section has changed. So under the search by person is how you're going to access the enrolled pause. So when you search by a person, you pick the person's name and, and the county, and you search, you should have a listing. And now um, then MSS has a the pause section, which is the primary view for that. Now, anybody who can search the person and pull them up, they will have that listing. 
And in that listing, you're going to have a way to go into the site and a way to go into the individual. If you click on the site name that's in front of the individual's name in the listing, you'll go into the site. You'll be able to have that uh, ability to do that if you're associated with the site. If you want to see the pause, you'll click on the person's DODD number in that list. That'll take you to the enrolled pause section. And then you can uh, access and pause if you are listed on that pause. So providers will have that same ability to be able to view pause right in MSS. The spa area, as we mentioned, was changed. So what you're going to get in the spa area um, now is you don't have to go into a site. Those of you who use the, the, uh, that approval area, you go in and instead of having to go into a site, you can go directly to SPA now. And it will, when you tell it whether you want to view a waiting authorization, a waiting pause submission or um, a waiting authorization. If you're waiting for plans to be authorized, you put that in there, you're going to get a listing of all the people in all of your sites across your county that are waiting for authorized authorizations on their current cost projections. If you pick a waiting pause submission, you're going to listing of all the people who have a pause that's waiting to be submitted. You would then choose them from there and, and do the part of the work that you need to do. Once you've authorized a pause for someone, we'll take you directly to that pause and um, what we're calling a pause preview page so that you can do what little tweaks you may need to do with it if you're the person to complete that. And then when you uh, complete that and hit submit, if it enrolls, it enrolls. If it's not, it'll give you the error messages. MSS SPA, we're talking about the preview page there that I already mentioned. I'm a little bit ahead of myself. But when I talked about the tweaks, you'll have some limits that you'll be able to do some editing within limits because they're trying to make sure that the cost projection and the pause have a link, that they're, we told CMS that the cost projection is going to be what the pause is based on, so we can't just let, you know, things be changed willy-nilly or any, in any which way people want. Um, we do have um, the past four years of the enroll pause are going to be in the new system. So we're going to pick those up, put them in the new system, put them in those databases. The old pause will still be there for viewing history, even back farther, but we need those in the new pause system. And you'll see why in a little bit. MSS also has a few reports in pause. One talks about pause history report. And the other one talks about pause authorized finalized plan report. So you'll be able to go in here and see what pause are were enrolled, you'll be able to see which ones are finalized, authorized, who authorized them, and when. You'll still have your um, data warehouse reports related to PAUSE. Those will not change. Roles to access the PAUSE. MSS roles have not changed. We have added some functionality to those roles. So out in the counties and for the providers, the the role, your role won't change. If you've got MSS right now, we're, we weren't going to change it unless we see in, see in the background you're supposed to have um, a higher level to do the pause work that you need. So SSA, SSA supervisors, people with read only, they're going to be able to go in. They'll be able to do that search by person. They'll be able to go into the person's pause because they're connected to the person. People with the MSS supervisor with authorization and MS fiscal administrator roles who already have access to SPA in PAWS or SPA will have the ability to go into the PAWS submission area, the preview page, and submit PAWS. Now, what we're going to do is we've looked at everybody who has PAWS roles, and if they have the corresponding MSS role, you're good. We don't have to change anything. But if your role grouping that you're in, and you have that, needs a higher level because you maybe only had MSS read, but you had pause to enroll, pause to be able to uh, submit pause, we're going to upgrade your MSS to supervisor with authorization. Okay? 
MSS provide roles, like I said, they're going to be the same. They have the ability to enroll pods that they are listed on, just like today they can go into pods. It'll just be in MSS. I want to review what a pause plan is going to look like. And this is going to be an enrolled pause plan. So I'm going to bring one up and show it to you. So here is what happens when you click on the person's DODD number and you go into pause. This is the first piece you're going to see. Notice that we have the individual's name, Medicaid number stuff up here. This is all fictional. This is taken out of the training environment just for everybody's um, benefit and so everybody knows. You can see that we have two enrolled pause years here. I can look at plan info, which gives me a listing of the enrolled pause. I can look at comments. And if I click on this comments tab, you're going to see this screen. This is a comment section that pertains to the overall person and overall pause, not based on a year. You can see that if you type here, you get a comment, it shows up here. I typed in testing, entered it. This is the comment. This is who put it in and the date that they put it in. When Medicaid numbers get update, updated, we're going to do an automatic list in here. So this is where you can see those general across the board, not pertaining to any one specific year comments. Suspension info is there too. If you click the suspension tab, you're going to see suspensions listed. You will not be able to add suspensions. This came out of the training environment. Training environment gives you the admin role so that you can do everything you need to do. But county boards and providers cannot enter suspensions. We will enter them here at the department. Eventually with the new level of care, um, when they do the NICS for that, for suspensions, it will eventually feed over here. That piece isn't connected yet, so we're going to enter those by hand once you send them to us. Okay. Um, you can see that, you know, you have, you, you enter date of service, and when I go to enter that here at the department, I get a listing of start date, end date, what are the reasons, and then the note to, to put in for why we have a suspension. So when we put that in, that's where you're going to see this all right there in a, in a line, okay? If you choose the waiver management on those tabs, this is a listing of all the enrolled waiver spans that come from WMS. Short, simple, nice place to see that. It means all these and it's enrolled. If it's not enrolled in WMS, it's not going to show up here, okay? So that's what you have for that first landing page. If you choose one of the years, so we're going to Scroll up back here, sorry to make people dizzy, and say I click anywhere except for delete. Anywhere on this line, I click on it and choose it. I'm going to get this display for that year. Notice we have names, a bunch of different information, prior auth if there is one, DDP ranges, versions. This will be an active drop down if you have more than one version. If you have more than one version, you'll be able to pick two and it'll say compare versions and you'll be able to click on that and it'll list the details um, one above the other in the same page. So if you notice you have this, if you have the ability to edit pause and you need to just change a few units from one side of the fiscal year to the other, you'll be able to add, pull this up and give you a preview page, do those edits, submit it again. Um, you won't have the ability to delete a version. That'll be here at the department. You'll, you can see the plan information right here. You know, some common community match force enrolled. Here are the comments that are based on the actual year that you're in. So if you're running through these units down here, have to make changes, you want to make a record of it, type it in here. It comes up most recent, followed by an older one. and we put the username and timestamp on it, okay? These are not able to be edited once they're entered. Same with the other comments. So once you type it in, before you hit that save, make sure you look and make sure what it says is, is okay, because you won't be able to edit, edit that exact comment. 
you'll be able to enter another one to clarify, but we'll be able to enter that exact one. Service detail lines. This is what basically is the same as before as far as detail lines. Service code, begin date, end date, contract number. You can see the service title. How many units, frequency. The total units for this and cost for this fiscal year, the total units and cost the next fiscal year. Um, the rate band, if it's adult foster care, adult family living. What you see out to the side, since it, this is an active form, it's not uh, scrollable. After rate band, you're going to see data entry. Who is the person who enrolled that pod? Who clicked the button to get enrolled? So you're going to see those are the detail lines. If I compare one version to the other, it takes the version that you've chosen and compares it to the previous one, and you'll see this basically this screen right here that has the details, and you'll see another one just like it, and it'll say current or version two. Or if you're comparing two to one, you'll have version two, version one. Three to three to uh, four, you'll have four, three. So it always goes to whichever version you have selected. And you compare it, compares it to the previous one. Okay. So that's what the pause is going to look like. Shouldn't be um, a major change for anybody. Um, oh, let me scroll down because there's a little bit more. When you choose underneath there, you can choose wait to view waiting list priorities, support broker detail, and fiscal planning information. So the fiscal planning information. You can see you've got total costs for the plan year. You've got how many are in each fiscal year for that, the match co cost. Over here you've got just DDP associated costs, total plan costs, non-medical transportation costs. So you'll have those listed separately. So you'll be able to see that at a glance. So you saw all those kind of different windows with the blue headers. And how do we get to them? Well, we land on the POS plan information page right away. If you want to see the waiting list priority stuff that window we show, you can click here. Support broker here, fiscal planning here, or you can choose all and it'll list them all right down the page in that order that's listed here. Okay. So you've got a couple different choices on the view of that. Let me shrink that and we'll get back to our slideshow. Existing enrolled pause plans. So the old pause will continue to be active. It just will not, you won't be able to make any changes. It'll be read only. So we have it there for historical purposes. You'll be able to look at what was approved at that time. What you will not be able to do is make any changes in the um, old pause system. We're going to bring the last four years of data over to the new pause. And then we're going to take all of the pending county review or other submitted plans that were not enrolled, and we're going to take them through a conversion process. So that's going to be the first step. And that's going to now happen on the night of the 25th. There have been some updated dates here. We'll talk about those in a minute. And the conversion process, this is what you can expect. Any of the POS plans that were pending that hadn't been enrolled, we're going to go ahead and run them through our edits that the system's going to do in the future. If they can be enrolled, they'll be enrolled right then and there. We'll put them on our enrolled list. They'll be entered into the system, the new system. Any of the ones that didn't pass and had error messages, we're going to here at the department go through and determine if we would have enrolled them prior to all of this. Could be that, you know, hey, we're couple dollars off on NMT, something like that, and it's like, hey, we, would have, we wouldn't have quit, we just would have enrolled that, then we'll put those in the enrolled list as well. Any of the ones that we cannot get enrolled, we're going to put them on a different list. That'll be an Excel spreadsheet that'll be sent out to every county and say, hey, these were POS plans you had submitted that couldn't be enrolled, and now you're going to have to submit them using the new process, which means you have to have a cost projection finalization and an authorization to get to that pause preview area so that you can hit submit. Okay. The other thing that's going to happen is 
once we get in the new system, we're going to look at all of those spans that were broken because of a DDP split. So the plans where I had two pause plans for one year because DDP range two was in one and DDP range six was in the other, we have them both enrolled. We're going to now make this look like one year. And so we're going to see it listed as one year, but when I look at the detail lines, those aren't going to change. So I'll have, they won't just be broken by fiscal year, they'll be broken at that level by the pause, or by the DDP break. That will be going away in the future because now we're going to have pause work just like CPP, which says if you have two DDP ranges, we're going to go ahead and give you the highest one and bounce everything up against the highest one for the whole year. Thought is, if you're planning for $80,000 for even part of the year, then you should have been able to stay under $80,000 before needing a PA. And so those plans where I needed a PA for short of part of the time because I was over the DDP, but I didn't need it for the other year, that kind of goes away. We're looking at everything at the year now. If they need a PA, we'll go ahead and do a PA. But it's it's going to those ones that were really difficult because cost projection, they looked at everything as a whole year, but for part of the year you were over the DDP and you had to figure that out, send us in a PA for all that, that's going to go away. So hopefully that makes some sense to people and it's not kind of earth shattering. When you submit the button, you're going to get errors. And I don't see any new questions, so I'm hoping things are going well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up our crosswalk that we're going to have posted of the error messages. So here we are, our, a list of error messages. Notice it says draft because we're kind of finishing up a couple of these. This is going to be available to you because when you get an error message, you're going to need to know what it is, what it means. How do I fix it? Those are the first questions. Some of them we hopefully you're going to understand just by reading the message. Okay, B, you're asking to slow down a little bit. Um, I can slow down. What Did you have any questions or anything I needed to review again, D? Okay. So here are the error messages. I kind of have them grouped in general, then adult day waiver and then specific waivers. When would they get these error messages? This error, this, these are the error messages you get. If you hit submit and it doesn't get enrolled because there's a problem, that's what this error message says. That tells you what the problem is. You'll get, I mean, you can get several because we go through all of them and we give you all the error messages at once. For example, current waiver span dates didn't match. And that's saying that the span dates on the pause plan that you're trying to submit do not match the span dates that are currently in WMS. How does that happen? You can finalize something and after at least finalization it's got that span with it. If in the before you get the pause you've already submitted something to WMS to change the waiver dates and that happens in the process when I get the pause, my waiver span dates over here are the full year, but my one in WMS now is the short span. And if those don't match, we're going to say, no, you need to go back to CPP and pull that through. So that's how, that's how that works. You can see that, you know, specific span overlaps multiple waiver spans. That shouldn't happen in the real world happens is that could overlap if WMS has um, short span one and now it's got two, two enrolled spans and your span that you're trying to push through it has the both overlap, both uh, short span pause plans or short span waiver spans are covered in this pause plan. You won't allow that. You need to go back and start a cost projection again and get the right date spans. Match source. If there's a match source problem, um, a lot of this has to be dealt with at the state level. If there's an issue, 
you can email us and we'll go through it. Some of it is our um, match source we know has changed periodically for different reasons. Sometimes it gets entered incorrectly the first time. Sometimes they've been enrolled more than once, enrolled, disenrolled, and so sometimes the system has some of those that it's not clear on. We have a way to correct that. Once we go in and correct it once, it will move forward. We'll tell you how that happens later. Multiple match source information, that's the same, kind of the same thing. Medicaid number missing. We know we all have all that. We won't check to make sure that the Medicaid number is the correct one at that time, but we will say if it's missing, we won't enroll this because we need it. And that's, you know, let us know. We'll make sure we get, go to IDS support, look up what the Medicaid number is in the um, MIT system, and we'll get it put in here. So that kind of gives you an idea of some of these messages. And Jamie had something he wanted. Regarding the, the Medicaid number, obviously if it's missing, that's pretty noticeable. But when you see the, it, it, that it's there and it may be invalid, the key, the, the typical ones that I see that are invalid are either Medicaid numbers that end in an 80 or Medicaid numbers that begin with a 91. ODM or the MIT system will not pay claims with those numbers or those specifics surrounding Medicaid numbers, so that's just kind of a, a tip if you see that error and you say, well, no, there's a Medicaid number there. Verify that it doesn't end in 80 and it does not begin with 91. Those, those are the more common issues we see with an invalid, invalid Medicaid number. Okay. We have different issues and with adult day waiver services, AAI not matching what you're trying to submit. So we ask you to go back and check your AAI. Um, proposed cost for NMT exceeds the budget. Because we're getting the cost projection feed right through, we know what cost of doing business the NMT was projected in in CPT, so we can do it based, we check that based on the cost of doing business category that the service was planned in, because we have that from CPT. So that won't, shouldn't be, you know, an issue going forward that we have, um, a big issue with some of the uh, problems with that. Now, if somebody's over 20 cents, something like that, you'll be able to edit those numbers down or up because it will be within our limits of what you can edit in the pause preview. Individual options waiver specific, you're able to, you're, you're attempting to enter cross for amount that is over the DDP, you're gonna get a message. Um, it's gonna let you know if there's a PA or P, uh, not a PA. Um, and, and then we also give you, a, we'll talk to you later about how you can enter costs or get the system to allow you to go outside of our limits to allow costs for DDP when somebody's over DDP, for allow costs to be entered that are up to the, to the DDP if you're outside that um, limit that we allow you to edit. And we'll talk about that here in a minute and step you through that. Um, if you have a PA, it's going to read if there's a PA. It's the same as MSS, and it's going to look back. And if you've got a PA, it's going to look at the PA amount. So it's also going to tell you, hey, you're over the approved PA amount. You may need a budget adjustment. And again, it's not going to allow you to do a budget adjustment or allow you to submit this unless we have those in there. Um, and you have a little bit of leeway with that editing. Okay. Level one specific errors. The three-year period is going to be a big, a big one. So here we have all these services that are you're allowed five thousand dollars. We're going to check that for the year. Um, trying to offer, authorize a combination of services and emergency that are over the eight thousand, you're going to get some kind of message like this. That's going to tell you you're trying to authorize this amount for the three-year period of, and it'll tell you what the three-year period is. And this is exceeding the $8,000 budget. Now we're going to go off, we're going to talk about the three-year period and how we capture that later. And there's a document to show you on that. So we're going to be able to talk about how we capture it, where does it come from, what can you do if you have stuff authorized but never spent, and try to get that below that. Okay? Um, and so we have that both for the $8,000 and the $7,500.
um, service line related errors. You're trying to take costs below what we're allowing you to edit in the pause preview area, which is 10% plus or minus what the cost projection came over with in cost. So it'll tell you that you're trying to do, you know, go above that with this provider for this service code. So it'll tell you what line you're doing that on. Um, if you're trying to reduce costs after they've been billed, we're going to look at the latest bill report, his, uh, report that we can get that's the most current. And we're going to say, hey, you're trying to reduce this, but some of this has already been billed. We're not allowing you to delete, the, to delete those units or to delete that line if it's deleting the whole line. So you can see we're going to say this service code from these dates to this date, contract numbers had billing history building this many units and, and dollars, so it's not allowed to delete. So you can look it down below and you can say, oh, I'm trying to reduce that below what's been billed. Okay. So we have one that's more related to line, one that's more related to the units within a line. We've got some self-specific errors, but because we've got the child, the adult, it'll call you those out. Of course, you've got billing. So we've kind of we've got those errors, and this is not a complete complete list of errors, but this is the, these are the majority of the errors. And we're going to try to keep updating this document as we can. So, but these are the main errors that you're going to see, and we're going to do another final look at this here to get it posted, probably now within the next week, since we have a little more time with the launch. So, those of you who were able to get into the training environment, you should be able to see that those are the errors that are going to be showing up in red at the top after you hit a submit button. In that pause preview area, before you hit the submit button, if this is a second version of a plan, we're going to give you some heads up as to what's changing. Okay, so before we go on, um, I got a question from Jenny. It's about billing. If a provider bills for a day that someone is in the hospital, for example, will they be stopped to prevent errors? or will they have to back out billing like they do now? I'm going to hand that one to Jamie because they, some of that stop now, some, it all depends on when people notify us. So I'm going to let him take care if, of that one. If the, if the county has notified the, the, the state level with the next form and then the pause specialist, they'll still, and we'll get to what they'll be doing, but they'll still be submitting the suspension information. So billing is going to still go and look and see if there's a uh, last date of waiver service, and then if it's an open suspension, it's not going to let any claims through after that. But then if the suspension then gets closed or it has a restart date, then any claims that come in after that rest on or after that restart date, those will go through. So the suspension process is still there, but it's all still really based on when we have the information to enter into the system. So effectively, if, if you get it to us pretty quickly and we get it in there and they go to bill, if it's in there, that'll get stopped. If we don't have the information yet to put it in, then we have no information to stop them. And then they'll have to back it out. Uh, like we were saying, that eventually we're going to have those suspensions just feed from the NICs. Okay. So we'll go back to what we mean by color coding. So if I have a second version of a plan, second or higher, correct. Jamie corrected me. So, so if I already have an enrolled pause plan and now I'm changing something, when I go to the pause preview page, I'm not just going to see blank lines. I'm going to see lines that are color coded. And yellow, a yellow line with orange field means this is the line that's, that is currently in the enrolled pause, and the line below it is what you're changing it to. So yellow means that line's changing. Orange means this is the field that you're changing. So it can call your attention to, oh, hey, did we really mean to decrease these dollars or these units for this provider? Before you even hit the error message stuff, you'll be able to see this. Red means that whole line is going away. That it's in the current pause, but if you submit the new pause, that line will no longer be in the, new, in the enrolled pause. It'll be 
be an older version, but that current version won't have it. Blue means that line currently exists in the current pause and is not changing with what you're proposing. And then no shading means that the line does not exist in the currently enrolled pause, and so it's new. Let me show you a picture of this so we can explain it. So this is basically that, that this is that pause preview area, and this is the color coding. And notice we color coded stuff, or we put the legend or key up here. Currently authorized and paused, field value changed, to be removed, and no changes. So for this plan, you can see A25 has been changed, and here's the line below it that you're wanting to change it to. And you've changed the units from 850 to 816. Down here, you've changed units for the next part of the fiscal year on that same code from 5 for 5150 to 4944. So you're reducing units. You're not reducing dollars, but in this case, in this line, it would be just reducing units. On this line, what's changed, the only thing that's changed is the date. Now we are letting you edit some of the dates within some parameters, and in this one, since it's A35, which would be a day program, or an adult day waiver services, then what's happening is I'm assuming that it was only on a calendar until 826, so it came over this way. But if you want to make it till the end of the fiscal year, you can change that just to round it up so it's at the end of the fiscal year. So that's the only thing that's changed. But notice the other units and stuff doesn't change, so that's not a big deal. But it lets you know what you're changing. Blue line, this one is this line is the same in both the proposed and the current enrolled. That line's not changing. Let's go down here to this ASN. This line is being taken out. And there's nothing underneath, so it's not like you're taking out that line for that provider and giving it to a different provider. It, it, it's going to be gone if you submit this successfully. So if it's something that was like behavior mods that haven't been built for and it didn't somehow come through the new version, you're not, you, know, you might want to think twice before trying to submit that so you can see ahead of time. So with, with this, this color coordination being in the what we're calling the pause preview page, this is really the page to say, hey, by the way, this is this is what you're going to tell tell us to enroll in pause. So it kind of lets you look at each line. I mean, this this example is really just to capture all the different types of things we would see. But a lot of times you'll just see, depending on the scenario, but you may just see two lines changing or two lines being removed. But it's going to vary from person to person, obviously. But this is kind of your, your chance to see, okay, yeah, that's what I meant to do. I, I, was, I was taking some units away from provider A or provider B. Um, and yes, the uh, ASN provider did not provide any services, so we're removing it from the plan, so that should be okay. But then when you hit the submit button, that's when pause is going to say, well, let's go look and see if that's possible to really happen. Like, for example, the first two lines, the A25, because that's going from 850 to 816, pause is going to say, Okay, did, did the provider 250010 um, bill over eight, 816 units? If it did, then it's going to spit back one of those errors and say, hey, by the way, this provider billed X amount of units for, for Y amount of dollars, and your plan says this and this. So it kind of gives you the direction to go in if, if you need to make a, a small revision. But this preview is really just saying this is what you want to do, and it's sort of your chance to confirm. That, that whole idea of having the to be removed in red is really to catch your eye and say, hey, you know that you're taking this entire service line off of the plan, and at which point pause would go and look and confirm that there's no billing in that service line to make sure it's okay. But if, if there is, then you're going to see the error that says, hey, you know, this provider has this bill, we can't remove it. So. so it's a way to give you some extra information before you hit that button to make sure that these changes, you know, what they're going to look like in comparing to the, the next version, or the old version that's currently in Okay, any other questions about color coding? Okay, I don't see any, so that's good. Um, what can I edit on the preview page? So the page we saw before, you already know we can allow, we allow you to edit units. We allow you to edit dollars. Dollars, we only let you go up or down 10% from what cost projection had for that line. So if I have $100 there, I can go down to 90 up to 110 but if I try to go beyond that, it's going to say, ah, no, that's a little bit too far. 
So you may have to bring through something from the cost projection to change that, or if it's for the DDP thing, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, date spans can be added in, edited with in the side of the fiscal year break that they originate. So I can't have lines go past fiscal year break. We never have been able to. But say I have a line, or I have a line that starts January 1st and goes to May 30th. If I want to take that out to 6:30, I can do that. If I want to have it start May 1st, I can do that. What I can't do is make it go beyond 6:30 that span, and if I change those beginning and end dates, I at least have to have one date in the span that came from CPT. I have to have one date in the new span that I'm proposing in the pause preview area. So those people who like to shift those dates around and stuff, you know, that is, the, we need to have at least that one connection. This. I think it will be helpful, say, you have caught, you, you put in two months' time that this um, adaptive assistive, assistive equipment was supposed to be provided, something happened, it's going to take another month. Well, at this point, you can just go in rather than doing a whole new cost projection and change that stuff, you can go into pause, you can just add another month's date into the span so that it will be covered. Okay. Split. We are going to allow you to split those lines down by calendar month or calendar quarter. And the, the um, splits are going to have to, you're, you'll, we're going to show you in a minute how you choose that. You have to, and if you want that on multiple lines, you choose it for the multiple lines, then you apply them. You get to look at them and say, yeah, if this is what you want, you can submit. If it isn't, you can say cancel the split. Um, again, then when we do a split, the 10% limit isn't based on that split line. It's based on the line that came from CPT across all of those. So let me explain that a little bit here in our next picture. So here's our line that we're going to split. And here's the generate split button. So this is a part of the preview page. And I say, okay, I want that split to monthly. It's just a little drop down that will do that. So split it to monthly, I hit generate split. It's going to show it to me like this now. The darker purple, or brighter purple, whatever you want to call it, is the original line. This lavenderish color are all the now, it's going to turn this line into all of these lines. Now notice these aren't exactly the same because it's all on, based on proration. Notice that this is for the month of October, it has 31 days. September only has 30. So we're just doing a straight, straight proration based on number of days in the month for, for these two numbers. Okay. Now you can still edit some of these and say, yeah, that's fine, but we know they're not really going to use all the 205 here because they're going to use it the month before for whatever reason. And this is, I think we used transportation on this one. Jamie, you can tell me if that's the code. That's oh, tell me commercial care. Okay, so say family's coming to get them for October, for half of October. So we're going to transfer some of these units and we're going to put them in the other months. You can do that. If they're going to be gone all of October, you could really take this down to zero. What we're going to look at, though, is that this number Take all the add up all these numbers and make sure that they're not outside the 10% here. So that's where the 10% limit. So if you like this split, you think it's good, you can again hit submit. If you don't, you hit cancel and it takes you back to that previous page and where you have the one line. Same idea with quarters. And when we talk about quarters, if say the person's plan starts 12-1, um, well, then you have one month in this quarter, then you have the next three in the next quarter, and so on. So if you do that for the whole year, you're going to have costs probably in five quarters, unless their span starts on January 1st or um, April 1st or July 1st. So just to kind of let you know that. So if you feel the need to do that, you can, do, you can split them that way. Okay. 
there. Again, if you cancel split, down here at the bottom, you either submit or you cancel. Cancel takes you right back, split says, okay, yeah, that's how we're going to put it through to pause and try to submit. Attesting to the need for PA. Okay, I saw a question pop up. If we have to use the split and adjust the unit, will the dollars automatically update? No, they will not. They're separate and independent, so you'll have to know what you're adjusting there. And like I said, we don't really pay attention to the unit. We're more worried about the dollars. So if you just move the dollars around but don't use, you know, update the units or you update the units beyond the 10%, we don't care. It's the dollar amount that we're worried about because that'll keep the cost within what the cost was projected within a little bit of leeway. Are the monthly splits only prorated and not based on what is authorized in the staffing pattern? Um, Diane, correct, because we bring it all over in the staffing pattern, so it's all rolled up into that whole that um, roll-up code band. So it's all in the roll-up code. So we don't go back in there and say, oh, yeah, but there's so many one to twos and so many two to twos and, you know, so many um, one to ones and so many in the background. It's all rolled up. So if you want to split it to that degree, you're going to have to know, you know we're just going to do a straight proration, figuring out most of this stuff is pretty even across the year. And if there's going to be any changes, you're going to have to know that. So if you're, so if there is, a two-week day program closing in December, will it automatically pull the units in December? No, it, it, it's not going back and looking at the cost projection. It's saying, here's your costs that come over at the pause level, which would have been the same thing that we've fed to, um, out, out to, if you use Gatekeeper before. And then you're going to have to know when you split it by month, how much of those units, okay, if December is going to be the one that's kind of low, so you don't want, or kind of going to be high and you need some of those units, you can pull them out of the other months and put them down in dollars. You can pull them down into December. Any other questions regarding that? Um, prior authorizations, how are these handled? Right now, if you, if you have a PA in and we know the amount, we're going to use that instead of the DDP. If a plan is being submitted and the total costs are over the DDP, and you don't have a PA submitted to cover those costs, you're going to get the DDP error. If you get the DDP error, we're going to allow you as the county to attest that you are aware of the need for a PA, and then, then we'll allow you to crease, decrease the dollars below that 10% limit to get under the DDP, to get services in, to get them started. It doesn't eliminate the, need, eliminate the need for the PA. What we're wanting to know is that, hey, you county, you know there needs to be a PA. If this isn't done in a timely manner, it doesn't get in there in time to adjust things, then we're not responsible, and Medicaid isn't responsible for the cost. You will be at that point because you authorize the cost in a pause plan, or not in a pause plan, in a ISP, but you didn't follow through on what you needed to do to get them submitted into Medicaid under the pause. So it gives you time, but we have had in the past people submitting PAs a couple months after the, the span is over and kind of negates the word prior for prior off. So you need to be on, on top of these and make sure, and this is our way of saying, hey, if your planning hand doesn't know what the fiscal hand is doing, then you need to be talking. Because the planning hand may, hopefully they, they're getting the PA in, but you as the fiscal side might not know it. Well, this says, hey, you know, we'll let you do this, but then you need to follow up with the other side of your county. To make sure you do this, otherwise here's the here's the reality of the situation. And we have had counties that didn't get their PAs in on time, have had to pay the provider for services they said were required in the ISP, but we couldn't get them in the pause. So the 
this is our way of making sure that people are on the same page. So here's how that's going to look. I have a pause plan. You can see the funding range is 76, but if I even for the total cost for the one fiscal year here, it's already over. So we're over by about 7,000. Okay. We're going to switch here. I've tried to submit it, and I get this message. You're attempting to enter cost amounts over the DDP. You don't have a PA submitted. Please go back and submit a PA before continuing. When you get that message, we're going to allow you to see this at the bottom of the page. I'm aware. So you check the box. You edit a line. This was 3600. We changed it to 36. And you generate, or you then you submit. Pause. And I got to check some of my my. Uh, screenshots here because I'm not sure that they are in agreement, so please bear with me on that one. But I can see that. I go here, it gets enrolled, and then here it was enrolled below, and, it's, um, and it is now below the 10%. So I this got changed to 3,600. I think when I was getting my screenshots, I may have, um, this really should say 36. But it'll say, okay, it's enrolled, and it's going to have that lower amount enrolled. So it went, let you go below the 10%. So you can submit that knowing that you will have to come back and you will have to, you know, when the PA gets approved, you'll have to come back and update this. And the where I see this in like current pause is whenever you got the, the whole plan going into pause and you got the first fiscal year and the second fiscal year and you realize it's over DDP, so you're saying I have to go, you know, get a PA process and, you know, to to uh, basically not hamper the provider from being able to bill, you may decrease the second fiscal year a certain amount of dollars to get below the DDP range temporarily while that PA works through. And then the PA comes through, and then you can go into that second fiscal year, bump those units and dollars back up, submit it to pause, and it'll go in there, it'll, it'll see, yeah, it's over DDP, but now there is a PA of, uh, um, approved, and it'll, it'll process against that and, and go. Okay. Any questions about that piece? Here's the here's probably the, the hardest part of the webinar because it's kind of hard to get this concept regarding the three year period and how pause is going to work with them. When you have a level one and it's gonna, you're going to go into the three-year period cost limit because you're doing emergency or you're doing the adaptive assistive equipment services. PAUSE is going to look for the three-year period. PAUSE is going to look for the three-year period in WMS. It looks for the initial enrollment date on the waiver for the recent span, for the recent uh, set of years that they're in. In other words, if I enroll on the waiver and I haven't disenrolled, there's one date. If I was on level one waiver, I disenrolled, came back six months later, and started again, well, when I enrolled the second time, that now starts the new three-year period. We don't go back to the original date. It's the, the start date of the, the continuous current waiver spans that I'm in now. Okay. So we know how to look for that three-year period. So pause goes back, looks in WMS, picks that up. So now that we know the initial enrollment date, we have a 36-month period to work with. So since we have a 36-month period to work with, we first go look at what was authorized. So we have four months data in of enroll pause in this system. Or, or four years, sorry, not four months, four years. Jamie caught me. So we have four years data so that we can cover any of these examples. So if I'm trying to submit for a span from 1113 to 123113, I can look back at this year and this year. And if you can see below, oh, I went too far. Just a little bit. 
You can see this year we had $2,000 authorized. This year we had 25 authorized. This year we had 25 authorized. So we've got $7,000, and since it's a $7,500 or the $8,000 limit, we're under, we're good. If I'm trying to authorize and this one's going to put me over with the other two authorized, it's going to give me an error. How do I correct that? Well, if you go back to the previous year and you find out what was billed, and you come back and update the cost projection to take that out, then that'll free up what's been authorized here for this year for that service, and you hopefully it'll have enough room. You can do that for the previous two years. So you'll be able to update those pods, and if you're taking them down in the billing, um, stuff has, is stuff, uh, the billing hasn't come through, then you can reduce that. Again, if you take it down and the provider has a year to bill and they come back later, then there may be some other issues. So you may want to do your due diligence on that. But we're going to first base it on what's been authorized because if it's been authorized, then you can't go above it because it still may be billed. So if you can reduce the previous years and then have the money that you need for this year, you'll be okay. That's all fine and dandy way when we have waiver years that fit exactly in our 36-month period. But we all know that doesn't work that way in the real world. Okay. So when you have spans being submitted in the 36-month period, and you have one that does not fit cleanly in the 36-month period. So I'm going to show you this example here. I have my 36-month period. This first span starts before the 1-1 one -one date of the 36-month period, and it ends 10-31. I have $3,000 authorized. In this case, the system's going to say, okay, I'm trying to submit 2,000 here. I got 1,000. I got 2,000. Hmm, 3,000. Well, how much of that $3,000 fits into this three-year period and doesn't? If this span, depending on the service, if the services weren't authorized until after 1-1-11, we'll look at that, and if it, and if it fits in the 1-1-11 span, then we'll count those as authorized. If it doesn't, if you have some of these costs that go before 1111, then we're going to say from this period, 1111 to 103111, we're going to look at billing for those, that combination of services. And then we're going to look at authorized, authorized, and do we have enough money. So in this case, we will look at billing if, if we have to. But we're not going to look at it. And, you know, if, if everything lines up underneath there, we can definitely tell us tell how many units are under 1-1 one, one to 12-31 and has been authorized. We're good. If not, we'll look at billing. So that works on the beginning end. If you look at it on the other end, I have my this waiver span starts at the beginning. We're good. We're good. That fits in. This span's been short spanned. So now, I don't, if this $2,000 that I'm trying to put in for the year 11 1 that goes beyond 12 31 13, if I know and I've broken up the CPT for these services to say, hey, these end 12 31 13, and I know how many units and dollars fit in this span, then I can compare it to what's authorized. So you may have to at that point, when it gives you that error message, say, oh, I need to break this up, and I know how much, how many dollars in units I have, so I need to go in CPT, and I need to under, under unscheduled, because most of these services are under unscheduled, I need to make sure that I can break those. I can stop and start and make sure it, it knows how many units are within the 11.1 and cost, or between 11.113 and 12.113, so it works it into this three-year period. Again, if, if you have unused authorization in any of these, you can go back to the CPTs, update the pause to reduce 
those to free up money for this year. But if this doesn't, you know, fit real cleanly, then you're going to have to somehow make the detail lines fit cleanly for us. So did I confuse everybody? So the short story of all this complexity involved in this three-year stuff is current pause will, uh, is only sophisticated enough to look at the, the current year that you're doing. So it'll say, okay, are you just trying to authorize $5,000? That's not over $7,500 or $8,000 in the emergency sense. But now the new pause is, is, is sophisticated enough to go back and look and see what has been authorized in the past, and are we staying within the $7,500 or the $8,000 limit? That way it's not getting caught in the back end of billing. That way whenever, you know, it's just kind of moving along year to year and the provider currently bills, and they get hit in MBS for, hey, you're over units and dollars for this three-year span. This catches it a little bit sooner, and it doesn't really allow for that back end error to occur. It's more so saying, you know, we're not going to authorize more than the $7,500 or the $8,000 in any given three-year span. It's kind of but try to identify those issues before they come up at the back end. Sounds like I put everybody to sleep. So hopefully that's going to help people on the front end of that because we know that there's problems more so with billing on the back end and people knowing what is the three-year period and all that. And some counties kind of have it down. Some counties struggle with it, and it's because it's not an easy concept. But we're trying to bake it into the system to make it much easier on you. Okay. So we're going to move on from that. If I don't, so I haven't, because I haven't seen any questions. So I either explained it really well, or I've just confused the heck out of you. So, where does pause get match source? Next thing. Um, just like the current pause, it'll look back to match source first. Start starting with waiting list record that wasn't used to enroll the pause. And it'll do that for everything unless we have overridden, manually overridden that um, waiting list record or the match source. There are a couple reasons a match source might change. We have had some that got put in under the wrong match source. And if we get that, we've got records of all that stuff and we can research it, we can update that. We have people moving from county to county. There's problems with um, counties being able to afford some of this stuff. Uh, if it's appealed and goes through the proper channels and we are told to change the, change the uh, designation, we can change it. Um, how that will happen is here at the department, Jamie, myself, um, a couple other people have admin. If we've got the okays to do that, we'll go in and for one year, the one year that we're starting with, we have the ability to override the match source and say, no, it's not good this, it should be this. And it'll change everything in that way we're here. And then going forward, when pause goes to look, it'll say, do I have anything that's been overridden in previous year? Oh yeah, boom. So that's the match source, that's what we're using. Instead of going back and looking at the waiting list again. So once we get those corrected once, it should move forward. Jamie was able to do a lot of that in the current pause because we've had a couple times when there's been a conflict. We have people who were enrolled under one way, were in disenrolled and came back. And the match source from the first one somehow got led into the second one, second enrollment, and people say, no, it's not community, it's Martin. No, it's Martin, not community. When we research it and say, no, it's this. Well, every year we would have to go back in and make sure that that gets entered correctly. Now we do it once it's done until we were told to change it again. So if you have a problem with the match source or it doesn't seem to be right and you talk to us, we'll get it researched and once we put it in, it's going to move forward that until we get another update. Billing information. And Jamie may, may have to help me with this, but you know, PAUSE is going to be looking at the same report that um, we get that's updated weekly after we pull the Wednesday billing and run it through the process. So I'm going to let Jamie explain this a little bit on here, talk about where it looks in the non-denied bill claims out there. So basically production runs every Thursday, 
and then the bill file is updated, you know, through that process, and then Data Warehouse pulls in the information from the bill file over the over the weekend through a scheduled job. So every every weekend, Pause gets a new sort of refreshed version of what's been billed. So then it, it looks at basically what we look at when we run a bill history, and it just looks for non-denied billed claims, and it looks for um, basically any billing that occurred in specific spans. So the billing is as up-to-date as it can be on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, there is a possibility, because that last point on that screenshot, you know, there's still a gap between the pause update and the billing report update. On Thursday and Friday, um, there is a possibility that, you know, you're pushing this plan through and you're reducing a few units or some dollars, and there might be some claims out there in limbo that a provider is billing as you're doing that work. Pause won't know about it until the following Monday. However, we will be able to see in the future, we'll have reports that come out every week that say, hey, you know, here's these few claims that are currently approved and paid, but they're no longer supported by an authorized pause plan. So we may see some of those. I'm not saying you shouldn't enroll claims on Thursday or Friday. I'm just saying that there is that slight possibility that down the road you may have some uh, uh, correspondence from the state level saying, hey, you know, we found these, these uh, few claims that were billed and they're no longer authorized on a plan. And we'll talk a little bit about that whenever we get to what the specialists are going to do. But So I guess the point of this is that PAWS knows what has been billed up to, as up to date as it can with the, the exception of those few days where there might be some claims kind of sneaking in. But what we have seen in, in, a, in an example on this is say you have a provider that you know they're, they're still billing along and you tr you're trying to lower units and dollars. Let's say you're trying to, to end date their service line. But in today's world, by the time the specials get to it, let's say it's five to ten business days later, they look at it and they realize the provider bill two days after the date that you have that you're trying to put through. So it goes back to, to the county and county review. The county looks at it and it gets back to the state and there's that five to ten business day delay and the specialist opens it up and says, Oh yeah, now those two dates are covered, but they now build two more days. So what happens in new pause is that that type of back and forth is gone because once you submit to pause, Pause tells you provider bills these two dates past the date you're trying to end it. So you can do one of two things. You either add those two dates to the authorization or you, you correspond with the, the provider to say you've overbilled here. But what it does do, if you're going to adjust the date, it's fixed right there and then and the provider will not bill any more after that because once it is enrolled in pause, it's sort of a lockdown, there's the end. That they won't be able to keep sneaking things through in those back and forth that we've had in the past. So this this much quicker uh, response time of pause and getting plans enrolled is helpful with this type of situation. So hopefully that is something that you guys are familiar with and will be able to follow going forward. And, and if you get it in there, again, the big thing is, is you're not waiting on us to process anymore. So since you're not, what will this pause specialist be doing? Um, Jamie explained that gap. They'll be looking at that report, and they'll be getting back with you and say, hey, you need to look into these. So it's either, you know, you took them out too early and you need to add them in, or you need to go talk to the provider and say, hey, you build and you weren't supposed to. And once you get those things cleaned up, you can hit submit and get the pause back in. Pause specialists also um, will be able to uh, go back and um, help you decipher the error messages, because a lot of the error messages came from emails that they would send out when things got put in county review. So we're going to you know, keep that going. They're also still going to be entering suspensions for now. So there's that, and we have a couple other things that we're going to try to get them to do, and I'm going to let Jamie expand on any of that. Another yeah. part of that sort of around suspensions will be, you know, while we're looking at the the, there's two separate pieces of it. While we're looking at the claims that may be paid that, that aren't on an authorized plan, there's also the piece that maybe there's some billing that came in prior to a NICS form being submitted. So this a provider bills on 9, 9 10 and, and uh, later on we get this NICS form that says the individual's in the hospital from 9 1 to 9 12. Uh, we would have a report that comes to us and say, here's some claims that were paid when there's a legitimate suspension in the system. Now, the, the, the solution to those types of situations is, you know, the, the specialist would be able to contact the county and say, here's this claim on 9-10, and saying the individual's in the hospital from 9-1 to 9-12. If, 
it's either one of two things, the provider billed when they shouldn't have, or the, the county may be able to research the, 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 the scenario and say, oh, yep, we, we had that wrong. The individual actually did get out of the hospital on 9-10. So the correction to the mixed form will come through, and then the suspension within clause will be updated. So th that's a little bit of an extra thing that I think we can have um, specialists looking into. Okay. We're really doing well. We're not, we, we basically got to the end of our end of our information of what we needed to um, get through so that people can submit pause. So if anybody has any questions, please type them in. Um, hopefully people have been able to get into the training environment and those scenarios that are on the page. What I'm going to do now is basically go through showing you where to find the information for the training page. So when I go to dodd.ohio.gov. Hopefully everybody's familiar with this site. And I'll answer that your question here in a second, Greg. So here's county boards, Medicaid services system. You can see resources. Here's our webinar training link, our webinar link. So we're going to post the the um, webinars, we're recording this one. So yes, you'll be able to hear all my um, mistakes that I've said in recording. They'll be here, listed under here. Here are the scenarios that pertain to pause. They have pause parts in them. We have individuals in MSS, if you want to know the listing of the fake individuals. Um, training ID assignments, so you know what county has what assignments and what password, user name and passwords are how the instructions on using the training environment because we want people to clean up their sites when they're done. So there, you have the admin role to admin delete them. So, and this also have the, the link to the, the website. So that's where you can find the training environment to run through those pause to try to practice that and get to know the system. Okay. Um, Greg Williamson, because I'm going to go back to the questions, asked about the MSS and gatekeeping. We are not changing the MSS gatekeeper where it pulls the MSS piece. That was still going to be there. There's going to be an additional place that they can pull now where they will pull the enrolled pause once they are done. Gatekeeper has the information. Gatekeeper has been working in UAT, our UAT environment, pulling stuff down to get ready for that. Um, please contact them regarding that when they think that'll be ready. Um, so it'll be a web service call, kind of like that stuff is now, uh, pull that stuff down and then be able to be put in your system. So when that's ready, you'll be able to pull down not only the MSS, but the enroll pause associated with them and continue to use that for anything you need to do to manage fiscal stuff after that. Um, when someone has two AI ranges, due to receiving both supported employment and ADS, how do we manually enter a, the lower AI authorization into pause? You don't. What happens is, if you're going to project between the two, MSS is going to bring that over, and MSS is going to um, have those, those lines directly out of cost projection, so we need the higher AI. What you can do, is if you know the cost is being decreased by so much for the one provider and you really want to put it in pause, hopefully it's not over 10% difference because you'll have that 10% leeway to do that. You may also decrease units um, to make sure that they're staying on, on track with that. But at this point in time, because the way the AI works is we go off what the higher score is. And when they have that differentiation, Really, the limiter isn't pause, it's the, the ISP that says, hey, here's what you're allowed to build. And we go by cost projection, and cost projection only has the one AI. So it's going to project at the higher rate, pull over, and you're going to have to manage some of that through the decrease in the uh, cost on the line levels. And, hope, and hopefully that the 10% is going to be enough for that, but that's really going to be um, something that you're going to have to try to figure out how to manage some of that and track it. Because right now, 
some counties just put in what MSS has, and if, if the provider billed at a higher rate than they were supposed to, then that's going to be back on them. If they were only authorized the lower rate in the ISP, then they could be caught for fraud going forward. Yeah, the training environment right now, Jenny. Um, Jenny's asking about the training environment. Um, we are notified of that. I have people in IT working on that right now. Something happened with the um, user role permissions last night for some reason. Don't know. They're trying to figure out what update was done that did this so that they can get them working again. So we'll kind of let you know as soon as we know that they're up and back up. Nancy, a provider can always bill at a lower rate. So if the provider is supposed to be billing at group A rate, but what's in AI is group B for, say, support and employment, then we have to have the B to be able to capture the higher one. And they are supposed to be billing through group A, and that's supposed to be in their ISP that here's what your rate is. If they bill more than that, then that's going to be back on them, and that's going to have to be followed up with, uh, you know, kind of after the fact. Okay, so for those people who, because of supported employment, have costs that are above, um, that they were allowed to get additional costs above that because they had so many units, and now when we increase the uh, support employment rate, Jody, you should be able to authorize those or finalize those in CPT right now. There is a listing of those people with their limits baked in the system. So you should be able to put that in there, and it should get through the finalization piece. If it doesn't, then you're going to need to contact us because it's a finite list they, where people had that at that time. And then what will happen is when it gets to pause, if pause catches it, you're still going to have to work with Rick because pause may say, hey, you're over the AI. But you know it's one of these situations that it got there because they have this additional um, override because of the increased rate from uh, support employment. When you contact Rick, he's going to go in and he's going to look at that version of the pause. And if he hits the submit button and it's that's the only error message is that they're over the AAI because of this, and it'll tell them the rate. He has a way to say, okay, I want to override that, uh, that uh, oh, edit that we call this, say, I want to override that rule in the system and submit it. So he'll check the little button that he needs to override, and then he'll hit submit, and then he can submit them as he does now. So that will stay the same for any of those people who have that um, additional uh, amount of dollars because of supported employment that they were receiving prior to the increase in the rate. And those people should already, already be on record. There shouldn't be any additional ones at this point. And those that Rick would enter, he's still going to enter them. You just need to make sure you take care of all the other errors messages for that pause before you send it to him. Nancy. The provide the system is going to pay someone either the allowable rate or what they submit as the payment, whichever is lower. So if the AI says C, but the provider is billing the A, it'll pay out the A. That's why it's back on the provider to do that at that point. Any other questions that we have that we might be able to help with? Okay, we're going to use your questions to get um, frequently asked questions that really pertain to the MSS and PAUSE. We're going to end up having to put that document again on this page. So we're going to put those resources up here on the Medicaid Services System page under the resources for county boards. Okay, so you can access them and read them. and. And, and that'll be kind of the first place to go. If I don't understand something, did we have something up here that might help? You also have the MSS support. You have several people that are answering that. Our PAW specialists are going to be included, included in the loop on some of that. So if 
you are um, questioning some of the air messages or something's going on and you really are trying to reach one of them, um, those things, those messages coming into that mailbox will be routed to people and we'll be forwarding some of those on to the specialists to go ahead and help out answering people. Okay? If I have everything answered, um, I think we'll be good. I just want to make sure people also got the announcement that we are um, delaying things a week. So we were going to start this Friday making pause read only, the old pause. It, that's not happening until the 25th. Then the night of the 1st, we're putting the new stuff in. So the morning of the 2nd, MSS should have everything in it that it needs to to start moving forward. Okay, yeah, Jody, the, the training site has a problem with the user IDs, and we're working on with IT to get that fixed. I have an email out saying, hey, this is urgent, so I, I have to follow up with them after we get off of here. Um, as soon as we know something about that, we'll kind of get it out to the field. They did Security did something last night with that environment that I think that kind of you can log in, but you can't get the MSS in the dropdown. So we're going to work on that today. Um, Key things that might be helpful to you as a provider, as the county board. But remember, anything that's impending, because a county review or something's wrong with it, try to get that back in with all the problems fixed. If it is there and it's fixed, we'll enroll it. Um, if you have any really old uh, county reviews that were sitting out there because things never got fixed, please try to take care of those. Um, if not, you'll just have to do them through the new system. Um, so any of them that are really old that you didn't need, and when we send you back a list to say, hey, this was something that we couldn't process and put in, and you're saying, oh, I don't need that, then you never update it, then the pause never got up, gets updated. Because we do have some that are a couple years old in there. Um, the spa area, if you know of any, that, any authorizations that are sitting out there not authorized, go ahead and try to Go ahead and get them fixed. Can you please clarify the system shutdown starting on the 19th or the 25th? Yes, the system is not shutting down. The pause was going to be made read only on the 18th. We pushed everything back a week. So now this whole process is not starting until the 25th. On the 25th, we make pause, current pause read only at the end of business day on the 25th. So you won't be able to enter anything new into that system. You'll be able to read it, won't be able to change anything. We've got to work on that data conversion we talked about, get all that stuff together, get all the everything ready, and then on the night of October 1st, after 5 o'clock, we're going to put all, make sure all that data is put into the new system, the four years of data, anything that we could enroll. We're going to get it put in there. We're going to get all the code update so that the morning of the second when you come in, October 2nd, everything will be in the new system for you to start processing things that way. Um, one other thing I was going to say, anything that you have that's pending authorization. So I have some authorizations. If you, if there's, if there's still an authorization on the night of the first when we go put stuff in, then when you go in on the second and hit authorize, it'll go into the pause preview. If you authorize anything between the 25th and the 1st, there won't be anything else, anything there for us to put into a pause preview section or listing. So if you have any that you authorize between the 25th and the 1st, please note that when, to get them in pause, those updates in pause, you may have to go back and do another finalization authorization to get into the pause. And that's all because we got a triage all that data. Any other questions before we sign off here? And I thank you very much for sticking with me and letting me run through all of this. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your time and hopefully this is um, going to be something that you're going to be able to incorporate 
pretty easily in your system, in the uh, counties. So, um, you know, we aren't changing the overall concept. It's just where some things are happening. Okay. Thank you very much again, and we will uh, be doing some more webinars. And I got a webinar that's going to be strictly for providers getting developed, so we can put that out there as well, so that they can know where to search for their stuff. Okay. Have a good good day, and if I don't get to talk to you, have a good weekend.